The bubble has burst and the knock-on effect of China's stock market crash is potentially huge. Saxo's Ola Hansen on what this all means for commodities and growth. What we've seen uh, so far this July in just a few short days is, is quite dramatic. We've seen a dramatic plunge in the Chinese stock market. What's even worse is that we've seen the intervention by the Chinese government failing and the markets continue to, to sell off. There's a lot of leveraged investments in Chinese stocks at the moment. 80 to 100 million uh, Chinese investors are trying to get out, trying to reduce their exposure, having lost quite a lot of money over the past couple of weeks. So that's obviously could potentially could have a negative impact on growth. And when you look at commodities, uh, commodities, especially the cyclical ones, energy, metals, they, they, they rely on growth and demand. Where's the demand coming from? China especially. If you look at the industrial metals, it's somewhere in the region of 40 to 50 percent of all the metals being consumed by China. If we see that the demand slows, then obviously that could have a significant impact on, on, on the supply demand situation. Copper and nickel are leading the way downwards, says Ola. Copper is obviously very dependent on, on, uh, on construction, in, 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 especially in China, and with the, uh, the risk of uh, slowing demand and slowing, uh, slowing growth, they are obviously being under pressure. Copper has reached the lowest level since 2009. That's basically back to when we had the recession following the 2008 financial crisis. So obviously it's quite a significant, uh, significant fall to a multi-year low. The same goes for nickel. So obviously we will find, uh, we will stabilize, but until we see the stock market stabilize and we, we get a, a, an idea about the impact on the, uh, this, this route has had on, had on the Chinese economy, we will see some nervousness in the market. Another casualty in all this is iron ore, which is bad news for both Australia and Brazil. We've already seen iron ore coming, uh, sliding lower again over the past couple of weeks. Big producers in Australia and, and Brazil all fighting for market share. If demand from, uh, from China slows, which we are seeing signs of at the moment, then obviously there's only one way the price can go, and that's lower. So at the moment we're back below $50 a ton. Some, in, some uh, analysts have, have uh, forecast it could fall as low as $30 later this year. So obviously there's some panic uh, going on in that market as well. And Ola points out that crude oil has fallen around $10 in just a matter of days. What really kicked it off was the uh, inventory report and rig count from the US last week which uh, showed a surprise rise in both. Um, that put the market on the defensive and now with the stock market crash in China, the demand growth is also being called into question. We have to remember that we've had stable prices for a couple of months based on the assumption that, that even though o OPEC was continuing to increase production, we would eventually see a slowdown in, in production from the US and we'll see demand growth continue to rise, thereby uh, keeping the market uh, balanced. That's not going to happen at the moment. We, 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 and now we're seeing the risk that demand growth, which has been strong, could potentially slow. And that will leave basically uh, the OPEC's plan of, of, uh, of stable prices uh, in, in, in tatters. And we need to find the new lower, lower price. At the moment, WTI probably is, is going to find some support down towards the 50 area. Brent crude around the 55 area. And I think will stabilize over the summer. And, and, but obviously, it all hinges on, again, how deep is this uh, correction in uh, Chinese stocks going to be and what's going to happen with Iran where negotiations are ongoing.